The alleged Cosa Nostra rule that the mob doesn't kill members of the public is a long proven fallacy. And it should come as no surprise that the deceased former Lucchese underboss Anthony Gaspar Casso was a man who was happy to have innocent civilians murdered. In 1992, Gaspipe ordered the sister of one of his former captains to be killed. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a look at the shooting of Patricia Capizzello, the sister of Lucchese captain Peter Fat Pete Chiodo. Allegedly, mob protocol dictates that innocent civilians are not to be murdered. The theory being that killing a member of the public would generate too much heat and attract too much negative attention. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel once said, we only kill each other. However, there are numerous examples where Bugsy's statement has been proven erroneous. With victims such as Janice Drake, Arnold Schuster, Robert Kubeka, Donald Bairstow, Dominic Ragucci and Nicholas Guido, just to name a few. And Anthony Gaspipe Casso planned to add another name to this list. On the 10th of March 1992 at 7.40am, Patricia Capuzzolo had just dropped her kids off at school and was parked across the street from her house in her 1985 Oldsmobile. A van pulled up alongside and a man in a ski mask jumped out and pumped several shots through her window. Capizella was hit in the neck and back but managed to scramble to the safety of her home. The botched hit sent shockwaves through both mob circles and New York in general. The victim's only crime being that she was the sister of a Lucchese captain who had turned informer and was about to testify against Lucchese family boss Vittorio Amuso. Pete Chiodo unsurprisingly earned his nickname Fat Pete due to his immense near 500 pound frame. Fat Pete was everything that a successful mobster needed to be. He was both a proficient killer and a huge earner. He also had friends in powerful places and he was a long term pal of Lucchese family underboss Anthony Gaspipe Casso. Fat Pete was also a key figure in the famous Windows case where the mob was skimming millions of dollars from contracts to install windows for the New York Housing Authority. In 1989, Kyoto was involved in the murder of construction union agent John Sonny Morrissey. Morrissey was good friends with family boss Vittorio Amuso and had been instrumental in the windows scam. However, with authorities closing in on the windows replacement scheme, Amuso feared that Morrissey might be vulnerable to becoming an informer. Sonny Morrissey was also linked with Peter Savino, another key member of the Windows case. Gaspipe and Amuso had heard from one of their sources that Savino was working with the government. And so to insulate themselves from Savino, the Lucchese bosses gave the orders to Fat Pete to whack Morrissey. Chiodo chose Michael DeSantis, Richie the Toupe Pagliarulo and Tommy Irish Carew to assist him with the hit. Under the pretense of a meeting with his good friend Amuso, Morrissey was lured to a housing development in New Jersey. Sonny Morrissey would have had no worries attending the meeting, considering that he was loyal to Amuso and that he wasn't an informer. In a half-constructed house, Fat Pete told Morrissey that he was just going to go and find Amuso and left through a back door. At this point, Richie the Toupee and Tommy Irish opened up on Sonny Morrissey, firing several shots into the union leader. When Morrissey saw what was happening, he apparently yelled out, I'm not a rat, but it was too late. One of the guns jammed during the shooting, and when Fat Pete came back to see what was happening, he found Morrissey writhing in pain on the floor, begging to be killed. Eventually, the tough Irish Union man was put out of his misery with a bullet from a silenced weapon. John Sonny Morrissey's death was just another example of a pattern of paranoia that Amuso and Casso had been showing in recent years. When Kyoto was indicted in the Windows case in 1991, he made a decision that would anger his bosses. Fat Pete entered a guilty plea in order to get a lesser sentence, but he had done so without consulting Amuso or Casso. The bloodthirsty Lucchese bosses, who were both in hiding at the time, became concerned that Fat Pete might betray them and reveal their involvement in the Windows scam. They then ordered acting boss Al Diarco to have Fat Pete whacked. 
Kiedo had been warned by the feds that his life might be in danger and he kept his movements close to his home on Staten Island, hoping to make it to the relative safety of prison after he had been sentenced. On May 8, 1991, at around 3.40pm, Kyoto was at a gas station talking with his mechanic when he heard a popping sound. He then noticed cement chipping away from the front office. Instinctively, he pulled his own gun and then saw the hit team firing at him. One of the hitmen was Joseph Diarco, son of the acting boss. Joe Diarco would later recall about the Kyoto shooting. He was running backwards shooting. Despite his bulk, Kyodo moved surprisingly fast. Kyodo and his attackers exchanged fire and Fat Pete was hit with 12 rounds. He lay on his back and when Joe Diarco approached to deliver a final round to his head, his gun jammed. Unbelievably, despite being shot 12 times, his whale-like blubbery stature had actually saved him. After Fat Pete woke in hospital with the FBI at his bedside, he learned from his lawyers that Amuso and Casso had threatened his wife and kids. It was at this point that Fat Pete made the decision to become an informer for the government. Fast forward nearly a year and the FBI had managed to arrest Amuso and they were prepping Fat Pete in Detroit for his testimony in Amuso's upcoming trial. And so we come back to the 10th of March 1992 and Fat Pete's sister, a mother of three, had just pulled up outside her Gravesend home in Brooklyn after completing the school run. Little did she know that for the past three weeks she had been stalked by a team of five men, including Robert Spinelli, his brother Michael Baldy Mike Spinelli, Jolie Calabresi, Dino Basciano and Gregory Capello. And it was Baldy Mike who drove the van that pulled up alongside Capuzello's Oldsmobile that March morning. Out of the van, Dino Basciano jumped out and promptly opened fire on the unsuspecting mother, hitting her in the neck and back. Basciano, who would later become an informer, recalls, She came down the block. She didn't park in front of the house. She parked on my side. I was on the passenger side. I told Michael, lock her in. We had ski masks on, I had a pistol with a silencer inside a bag, and when I got out, she looked at the van. She didn't notice me coming on the side, and the van got close. She looked and spotted me, and she tried to move the car. I shot her through the window. She went down. She went to put her head underneath the dashboard. She was screaming. I shot again. The silencer cracked, broke off. I hit her one more time, and bullets were going all different ways. Miraculously, Fat Pete's sister Patricia had survived. Gaspipe had ordered the hit to scare Fat Pete from testifying against family boss Amuso, but allegedly there were many in the mob who believed that Gaspipe had crossed the line in targeting an innocent woman. Fat Pete did testify though and Amuso was sentenced to life without parole. Michael, Baldy Mike Spinelli, was sentenced to 19 years for his involvement in the shooting. He became a made man for his part in the hit, bizarrely in an induction ceremony carried out in a prison bathroom with a burning piece of toilet paper. Despite his sentence finishing in 2024, he was released early in 2020 due to health concerns related to COVID-19. He claims that he is a changed man and that he wants to become a yoga instructor. His brother Robert Spinelli, who was part of the hit team and drove the switch car, would turn informer years later. Jody Calabresi pled guilty for his involvement and received 10 years. Gregory Capello, who was in the crash car with Jody Calabresi on the day of the hit, died in prison of cancer while serving a sentence for an unrelated crime. Fat Pete went into witness protection and died in 2016 at the age of 65. Kyodo is often seen as a man who was betrayed by his friends and had little choice but to turn informer. But let's reserve little sympathy for a man who participated in killings such as that of John Morrissey, who was also needlessly murdered. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.